Hi everybody, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada, and you're watching Cars and Crosby. Got a great episode for you. We got Escalades and Corvettes on the channel today. Uh, I've had quite a few Escalades that have been going out or coming in, and uh, I've had a lot of Corvette stuff that's starting to finally uh, get moving. That gust fall is continuing. I would start to say that this is a breeze fall now in being consistent uh, with um, the momentum that we've been getting from last week. So a uh, great episode with a lot of positive news to pass along to you guys and got some Corvette and Escalade content for you today on this episode. <music> Okay, so let's get right into the meat and potatoes. It's uh, not Thursday anymore. I've been so busy with deliveries that I couldn't film all of the stuff on Thursday. It's now Friday. I'm hoping to deliver this on the same day that I normally have these episodes come out. Um, so yeah, uh, good news all around. If, uh, if, uh, if you look at what's coming in right now, I would say that we still have a massive amount of stuff that is tied up, that's been built, um, but we're finally starting to see the influx come in just to give you an example for me for example i have about 17 units that arrived and i sold about 16 cars last month so i've already got more cars on ground than i did last month in total uh, and uh, that's really good news so um, i think what i would take away from this is that the supply chain logistics part of it where the vehicles are built sitting around and uh, waiting to get shipped in is finally starting to uh, alleviate. We're starting to finally see um, the flow of stuff increase and stay consistent. And that to me would be the biggest thing that I would take away from today's episode from a logistics perspective is that things are getting in motion. I'm still a little frustrated in terms of the timeline and expectations. GM uh, is not very accurate right now in terms of how they uh, tell us when a vehicle is going to arrive. And then when I pass along that information and it doesn't end up being that date, I end up looking like a fool. So um, that's the one thing that right now I would like to give you guys a head up, heads up on is that if your dealer gives you an ETA, don't think that that's the exact ETA and also don't think that it's your dealer that's making these types of mistakes or is lying to you. They're just being told something and then it doesn't end up being the case. So not to try to transfer the blame and to throw someone under the bus, but I'm trying to give you guys an expectation of what's going on and what to expect. And this is the latest curveball that I've seen in recent times that um, I don't think a lot of people fully understand. Um, I did have a Corvette arrive, so we're gonna go through a Cars and Crosby special um, because it's, it's a deal of mine and we've got a lot of fun things going on it. So this is gonna be um, a component that will show you what I'm made of and uh, you know to dust off the cobwebs and to get um, back into the spring atmosphere. Um, this is gonna be bringing me back to the good old days we had last year when we had our windfall of Corvettes arrive. Um, I did get two Corvettes this week, so if you're on my list, take yourself down two notches. Uh, not gonna be mad about that to get two in a week. That means that I'd be on track to get eight for this month, and uh, that's a decent amount for me at my dealership given the nature of when we are, where we are right now in uh, the month. So. These will be built in the uh, early parts of April, mid, mid to late parts of April. So you'd be seeing it in the beginning of May. Um, if you guys are following along with the timelines, we still have plenty of time to be able to get the rest of our Corvette orders in before the model year changes and also before the snow and the, snow and the ice and salt and all that crud uh, gets off the road. So still not in a dire situation. We are starting to get more Corvettes. We are definitely still getting Escalades. I got another uh, three Escalades today um, and uh, a weird one on the ESV. I wasn't able to get it in sport or a platinum or in diesel, but on the short version, I could only get platinum. So a little bit lopsided. I'm having to go very far down on my list to be able to fulfill the ESV version. And it just goes to show you guys that, um, you know, just because you might be 20th on my list, doesn't mean that you're gonna to have to wait a year. The individual that's getting this ESV order actually just recently placed their deposit and they're already getting theirs built even though there's some people that have been waiting over a year for their Escalade. And that just happens, that just ha has to be, happens to be because um, the allotments are one thing and the constraints that are available are another. And right now, constraints are an issue. I have a feeling I know why the constraints are an issue. And uh, this may not be a benefit for you right now, but it is good news because of uh, what that means it's about to come. 
I've heard through the grapevine that General Motors was producing some of the Escalade Vs this week. And um, I have a feeling that with these Vs that they're probably gonna be very fully loaded option builds. And that maybe is a reason why we're seeing a lot of constraints right now on the full size SUVs, because they're pushing all these pieces and parts into these fancy pants Escalade Vs. Um, I'm excited to find out what the price point on this vehicle is gonna be. Um, if you're doing simple math and you're looking at what the Corvette is to the Z06, that I think would be an easy um, calculation to make because this is going from a base 6.2, which is in a Corvette, to a supercharged 6.2, or at least I think it is, uh, the LT4, and that's about a $25,000 increase. So maybe there's some other things that go with it, but right now in the C7 generation, it was about a uh, $25,000 upgrade to go to the V. I have no idea if that's going to pass through, but if you're looking for a guess on the price point, I would say that it's going to be in the um, 140 to 150 K American range uh, for the ES, uh, for the Escalade V. Um, in terms of allotment uh, right now, I am seeing a lot more of the um, non fancy pants stuff that I don't normally feature on the channel. Uh, so, you know, canyons and Colorado's Equinoxes, XT4s, sparks encores those are really starting to ramp up and it's it's probably because they have not been built for a long time because we've been only ordering corvettes and stuff uh if you guys were listening to corvette today you would have heard that we had our first uh chip issue with the corvettes and this is kind of a mixed feeling for me because uh, as an all brand dealership i've been dealing with these chip issues for a very long time on other vehicles and to some people in the corvette world they're kind of freaking out and wondering what's going on and is the sky falling and everything because they can't get the backup sensors. And in my world, I'm kind of numb to it because this is nothing. Compared to some of the constraint issues that we have on some of our vehicles, that's not a bad one. And if you guys are reading the fine print on this, it's a retrofit at a later date, meaning that the actual parking sensors are on your Corvette and it's just a chip that needs to be done at the first oil change in order to get it done. On the heated seats, I mentioned that before, which was a known issue where the heated seat elements are still embedded underneath the seat, so they're not tearing up your seat to install them. They're just having to put a microchip in to make, make that seat component work. So yes, you're not gonna have rear parking on your Corvette. Um, you luckily have a lot of cameras and you can use you know, your neck to, to look around behind you. And once you get your first oil change, it'll be a thing of the past and you got $180 credit to go with it. Um, in terms of constraints, one of the weirdest constraints that I'm running into a problem with right now is no sunroofs on the Tahoes. I still have a Tahoe available right now that does not have a sunroof on it. It is a diesel, which I think is going to be way better for resale because of how saturated the market is on the gas version. So if you are interested in jumping my line on getting a full size SUV and getting into the market for, for maybe slip, flipping it and selling it down the road, I have a diesel Tahoe with, uh, it's an RST with no sunroof that's still available as of this episode. So let's see if we can get that sold by the end of the day. Um, we're gonna go out and see some fun stuff now. I've got an absolute ton of things that are coming through uh, the dealership right now. And uh, I'm very busy with that. So I apologize if I haven't been getting back to you, but I am like in month end, even though it's not month end right now. And uh, I'm not complaining because that's where I'm in my element. You know, I love talking to you guys giving you heads up and information on what to expect for your order. But when these orders come in, it's all hands on deck and that's my number one priority. Uh, so we're gonna go out to uh, see the things, an update for you on the orange Corvette that you're gonna see in this episode. I have already sold it and I also will not be doing a lot of posts on the Facebook group as I did get a lot of backlash on the pricing of the Corvette that I had. When you guys have a used car, it is subject to market value. And the MSRP is no longer a thing that is reflected in the price point. When we have a vehicle that is used come in, we by law do not have to sell it at MSRP. We can sell it for whatever we want. And when we look at what the market is doing and we see what comparable vehicles are selling for, I don't really appreciate getting the flack just because you think that that's overpriced. Your price point and your value is something that's unique to you. And you need to keep your opinions to yourself about what you think is an unfair price because this one, for example, it sold in four days. So I'm very excited um, to get the opportunity for somebody that doesn't have a Corvette to um, get one. And if they wanna pay a little bit more to get that on a used model, all the power to them. So I'm not gonna go into more topic of that. It's sunshine and rainbows from here on in on the episode. Stay tuned, guys. 
Easy does it. Oh, where's he going? We're just chasing him down. What's this guy up to? This is definitely, he's going in right into service. What the heck is he doing in service? Can I do an indoor delivery maybe? This is definitely a new driver, folks. All right. Well, let's unwrap this Corvette. How you doing, man? Got one today? Just one. Alrighty. How's the plant looking right now? It's busy. It's busy? Now, it's busy. Everybody's getting one today. Where have you been driving around to? Everyone's just getting one off of this, eh? Uh, except for Richmond Hill. They're getting two. Ah, those Richmond Hillers. So how often are you coming back to Canada? Are you, are you, are you backed up the whole lot right now? Is it full to the end? Or how full is the, the, the lot down in Bowling Green? It looks full. So they're trying to catch up. So. Really? Um, so where are you normally hauling to right now? West Coast or are you mainly doing Canada trips? I'm doing a little bit of everything. I was in Miami last Wednesday. Wow, this is quite a difference for you. Yes, it is. Are you a Canuck or are you an American? Where are you I'm from, American. big guy? What's your name? I'm Morgan. I'm Bill. Bill, nice to meet you, man. Miles. How long have you been driving trucks? Oh, I've been with this company about eight years. Good for you. So you're from Ohio. So that means that you're probably going for the Bengals this year, aren't you? I guess I'm going to have to. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's pretty close, isn't it? Whereabouts are you from in Ohio? Hours side. Oh, Cincinnati. Isn't that the city that had its its river catch on fire at one point? Probably. <laughs> Don't want to make a an enemy for anyone in Cincinnati, but I've heard the nickname for the town is the mistake by the lake. Well, that's, that's Cleveland. Oh, that's Cleveland? That's Cleveland. <laughs> it was one of the seas from Ohio. All right, before I burn any more bridges with my folks from Ohio, Rick Conti's gonna get after me probably too. Let's unwrap this and show you guys what this Corvette over here and this one are all about. All right, new trade alert. It's here, finally. I'm excited about this one. I've been waiting for a couple of weeks until month end was over and then we got it on the enclosed car hauler, went and picked it up, had a, had a nice chat with the individual that was getting the Acura NSX in almost the exact same color. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy to have this. Orange is definitely the theme with this one. And uh, I'm not in my usual area where we're gonna go see the Arctic edition, um, just because we just had it detailed and this is the only dry area that I have before I can put it in the showroom until it's sold. And uh, as you can see, all the front windshields and everything are all fogged up because we just steamed the vehicle to sterilize and clean it. And uh, it's a lot hotter inside where we were detailing it compared to outside and it's it's foggy in there. So we're gonna let it defog while we do the outside and then we'll go on the inside. So I've got a Sebring Orange 2021 hardtop convertible. This here has a set of stance wheels on it. Similar kind of program to what I'm doing with the Vossens. Don't know a ton about stance. I have heard about them. I've seen them on other vehicles. They're very similar to what my HF5s. I get a little bit of an HRE vibe as well from them. These are not gonna be on the vehicle when we sell them. I just, for the sake of, you know, being able to get this vehicle here, I had to obviously have a set of wheels on it. And then I found a very new set of the originals that came from the window sticker. And then we have them getting powder coated like I do with the set of split spokes in black to match the, uh, the cells and the top being painted. And I think that I might put a, a spoiler on here, but I'm not too sure what. Now this is a non Z51. So in terms of, you know, keeping with the theme, a low profile spoiler in carbon flash, in my opinion, would do quite well. But you could also do a Z51, but if you do a Z51 in something more aggressive, I'm gonna have to balance that out on the front end and we don't have anything there right now. So that might just start getting a little carried away and I might wait until somebody has this purchase before I do the rest of it. So my suggestion would be to do a spoiler to balance it out and to keep with that awesome theme of breaking up this beautiful paint job. So this is already a discontinued color. This is Sebring orange, which has got a lot more metal flake than what uh, the Amplify orange has. And um, I'm a real big fan of breaking up these kind of colors. And I use the mirrors and the top and the accents as a way of doing that, as well as the logos to make sure that we can get, um, you know, a nice contrast going. Now this is a 1LT. So on the interior here, we had to doll it up and he did a good job at bringing the outside to the inside. He obviously listens to the channel or he had the same kind of mindset because we have the orange seatbelts and then he did an orange accent on all the stitching. So all this stitching in here is done with an orange 
that did not come from the factory, but he did a good job on it. My detailing team said it didn't bleed or anything like that when it came off. There's a really good angle at it. And then here with the seat belts is another good angle. Now this is a GT1 seat because it is a 1LT. And with a 1LT, one of the cool things that you get is you get the live stream camera mirror on the hard top convertible. So very nice additional item that you get with the hard tops. And this is a hell of a car for what you get on a 1LT. So I'm gonna get this, I'm getting in a little bit of a traffic jam here with stuff, but I'm gonna get this in the showroom. Still has this 0% availability. So if you're looking at financing this vehicle used, you can do it for 0%, which I just, I still can't believe that they kept. I saw the programs came out for January for 2022. And I was like, oh, sure enough, they're gonna get rid of it because of how lucrative it was to buy 100, 150,000, 110,000, anything in between that Corvette and finance it at 0% when a new one is at, I think, 4, 4%, 5% right now for interest. So just think of that. The second it gets off the lot and it becomes used, you can then finance it for 0%. There is a value right there in itself. Hope you guys enjoy this. Let's get on to the next one. Okay, we've got ourselves an Arctic White Arctic Edition. That's what you call it when the snow is literally higher than the Corvette behind it. That's pretty fun. Welcome to Canada, folks. All right, we've got a lot to do on this one. This is exciting. Cars and Crosby is getting warmed up for the summer season that's coming up upon us. I've got a lot of fun things on this one. Another customer with a lot of enthusiasm and style is the key word to note with this one. This is a style cruiser that we're gonna be doing, similar to the Sebring Orange one that you just saw. This is a non-Z51 convertible. It's a 2LT, which is the sweet spot in terms of creature comfort items. And we're focusing as much as we can on style to keep within his budget, which was around 110 pre-tax. So I love that kind of stuff. You give me a budget, I'm gonna get every single penny I can to make this thing look as awesome as possible. So this is really gonna be a great one. Get your notepads out, folks, if you guys are trying to do a cool project on a budget, because this one has got a lot of what Cars and Crosby is made of. We got Arctic White. I haven't had a lot of Arctic Whites, but you know what? It's a clean palette for me to work with, and I appreciate that because I can make this thing accented and I can make this thing pop with all the things that I do with it. On the inside here, we do have a two-toned GT2 seat. We've got the carbon fibre on here. And because this is the adrenaline red on here that's a two-tone, you'll notice that we got the free red stitching like you would get normally on a 3LT if you were doing a black interior. So all you got to do is get the adrenaline red and then turn it into a two-tone. And then you don't have to pay all the money to get the 3LT and you get all the stitching everywhere else and some cool little accents on the GT2 seats for a lot less money. So there's their first cost effective way of making it look good. And we've got the carbon fiber on here as well. That's the only place that you're going to see the carbon fiber because the secondary color on this vehicle is without a doubt going to be carbon flash metallic. Now carbon flash metallic is on the top here with the nacelles and the top painted. I also have all the accents that are being done in Carbon Flash Metallic, so the logos, the script on the back. And that's the last time the back end is going to look like that because we are going to be drilling in some holes and we're going to be putting a spoiler on there. Oh, geez, that scares me a bit. I think we can get that out. Yeah, it's just some oil. Um, we've got the calipers on here, which are in red, which matches the taillights, the logo, and then obviously the interior that you just saw. And then on the front end, we're going to be balancing it out as well. I'm not going to give you away all of it right now, but let's just say that this is going to have a full outfit of stylish clothes to go wherever it does in the summer. And it's going to be a cool one. So this is going to be the final Corvette that we have for today's episode. Um, we've got a lot more stuff on the way and I've already got another one that's getting built next week. And then I've got two more orders that I have to place. And we're seeing, you know, I guess at least from what I've heard on the Corvette Today podcast with Keith um, you know, in terms of updates, it looks to me like everything's going very hunky dory down at the plant in Bowling Green. So a lot of more fun things to come on the channel for Corvettes. Wouldn't it be awesome if that was the price of that? <laughs> My Corvette Alley is getting 
a little bit less, but now obviously with this one, it's getting more. The white 15 is sold over here in the middle. We just got to get it out and put it into storage. These other ones are still available. That is a manual. I can't believe that this is still available. And uh, this bad girl here just came in and we got a ZL1, or sorry, a 1LE that just came in from the C5 generation. All right, she is a windy one. So I'm gonna stay in here where it's protected even though I have quite a lineup of Escalades that I could show you guys. Um, well, this is another cruise missile. This is what I'm calling them. They're big, long, they're diesel. They are just highway monsters. And we got Super Cruise on it as well, which I'm very fortunate for because um, it's an amazing, amazing, amazing technology that we have. And it's becoming a standard item again, like it was supposed to be on the 22 model year Escalades. Um, so just as a heads up, another thing that I've noticed, if you have your Escalade on order and you know your dealer told you that Super Cruise was not available and they priced it out without it, well, now Super Cruise is a standard item, so it's gonna be about $2,800 Canadian more for the Escalade without he, him or her even able to change it. So um, if you are gonna get an Escalade and Super Cruise is not on constraint, anticipate that the Escalade that you have is gonna be around $2,300 more American, $2,800 more Canadian, and your dealer can't do anything about it. So don't get mad at them. Don't think that she or he um, was trying to upsell you. It's just the way it goes, and it's an amazing technology that you need to embrace. So, cruise missile. We've got ourselves here, the monochromatic logos, even though this isn't an Onyx, and it isn't an Onyx because we have a beautiful set of 24 Vossens that are coming in in the six lug format. I will show you guys that at a later date, but because it's still this crap out here right now, we have our tires on here. And this is a very important thing to debate and note about. It's now, according to the Groundhogs, about five weeks away from the end of Christmas, from winter. Do you get winter tires right now, or do you just take these Bridgestone Alenzas and drive for the rest of the winter on these? I personally am conflicted on this because you're basically asking me, am I gonna be safe with my family in this vehicle? And the answer to that would be, uh, I don't even know if there is an answer. I don't even wanna put my, there's no Cars and Crosby legal team yet, but if there was, they'd be freaking out. Um, I think, to be honest with you, you can't put a price on safety, especially if you're getting a long wheelbase one and there's probably gonna be kids in the back of it. Winter tires are really good at stopping. That's the biggest component that you get from it. So if you have a, a really cool truck, yeah, set of mudder tires, they're actually not that good in snow or icy stuff. They're good in heavy snow and, and all that kind of stuff, but it's the ice that's the problem. And yes, he might be doing, maybe he's taking this down to Florida. We have no idea. But you know, the, 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 the debate here is, will I be able to get away with these in the winter for five weeks? Or should I, even though I just got my Escalade in, get winter tires? You can see what the customer's done on this one. I'm not gonna, you know, force your hand into what you need to do, but I guess the one phrase take away from this from Cars and Crosby is you can't put a price on safety. Um, this is crystal white, it's a sport. And as you can tell by the low end grumble on it, this is a diesel. The only badge as of right now, because there's a V coming that's different on these is this little D right here. And I've already talked about what the 600 means. That's the amount of torque output that this vehicle has. And then with this being a diesel, it has a ton of it. And if you're wanting to know what you can do with that, right over here on your window, or on your window, on your, your, your B pillar frame, you're gonna see all the capacities of what you can tow with your gross vehicle wheat rating, wheat, wheat rating. Wow, I need to have my coffee tomorrow, right, this morning, guys. This is the third day in. If you haven't been noticing with the Cars and Crosby outfits, we're three outfits deep because this is taking me three days to be able to film all this content to be able to get out my episode just because of how busy it is. I have six deliveries going out today. I had four deliveries yesterday. Here is your first look at the black interior inside of this Escalade. The AKG sound system with the black has probably got to be one of my favorite combinations. So if you're looking at the A pillars here, that big speaker, these speakers here and the ones in the seats with the whisper beige piping. This is just absolutely gorgeous. And it smells in here like a really fancy uh, leather handbag, I guess, or maybe like a really cool old school library or something. 
Um, my, my boss, Mr. Finch, he has an Escalade Platinum and he hasn't been able to get an ESV Platinum for himself. And um, his is now over a year old and there's a markedly, dis there's a big difference between um, his and mine when you open up the door and smell it after his being even a year old. That leather and that quality, it really exudes when you when you get into it and it reminds me of when I get into my 3LT Corvette as well. It has kind of that same um, high-end leather smell that you get into it and that's obviously because this is all hand-wrapped leather components on the dash, the steering wheel. Everywhere you look, this is all full grain Napa leather, uh, which is amazing. We've got our nice mats on here with the Cadillac monochromatic crest, illuminated door sills, Super Cruise, which uh, again, guys, it's an amazing technology. Uh, we also have the refrigerator on this one. This here is also a freezer. So the second button, if you press it, will turn this into a freezer. In about five minutes, you'll even see frost forming, depending on what time of the year. Obviously, if it's in the summer or you're in a humid place, you're gonna see frost in there a lot sooner with the humidity. Right now you won't see this much, but it is amazing how fast this freezer will work. And if you think about how, how long your average trip is in a vehicle, maybe it's a 20 minute commute or something like that, or you're with your buddies and you're going somewhere quickly. Um, me just, you know, dreaming instead of it being this outside right now. Let's just say we're going to the cottage or, or to put a boat in there and you wanted to get some drinks cooled before you went on the boat. That would be your best friend. So very cool. Now this is an ESV, which we already learned on our last episode is extended st or Escalade stretch vehicle. So the stretch component is gonna come right over here. I'm just gonna flip this down. Uh oh, Cars and uh, <laughs> Throttle House is gonna burn me on this because this is where they went viral on their one video. See, I like to sit as far back as possible and hide behind the B pillar when I'm driving. Not because I'm picking my nose and I'm trying to hide it. I just like to do it. I like to sit back like a easy boy, lazy boy chair. And the, the guys from Throttle House pointed out that when this seat is fully reclined, that these TVs do get in the way. But hint, hint, nudge, nudge, these may not be around for very long. So um, just a little heads up. So we're gonna press this, and this is where you're getting the uh, extended stretch in the, in the ESV format. So 10 inches longer in terms of what you have for usable space means that you're getting a bit of it in the third row. And then the second part that you're getting the extra space on an ESV is in the cargo area. There is about an additional four or five inches from right about here that you're gonna get additional in terms of cargo space on the uh, extended stretch ESV. Um, now we got a lot of fun stuff in here because this is a diesel, it has a block heater. We've got our summer mats in here. This is the trailering component to the um, to the uh, the Escalade, and you guys have seen my, my Charlottetown PEI epic voyage that I had. Um, that is um, a really cool accessory that you can put on side the, uh, the, the trailers to be able to see what's in there. These are the new headsets that you get for the media system in the back. And then there is your cargo management package as well. Um, which is that thing that I was joking around about with the uh, watermelons in the back of it on another one. So more space in the back, about five inches here. You're gonna get about three inches, three to four inches in the third row as well um, in terms of additional leg room for the, uh, the passengers in the third row. Nice thing about this is you get USB-C outlets in the back here. They have their own HVAC in the top as well. It's a very well thought out platform. And then you've got your entire media system down here that's standard on all of them. If you have the TVs, you can play things like Xbox, all that kind of cool stuff. And I just, I just get a huge kick out of how cool the speaker covers and everything on this uh, Platinum look. Now you've got your illuminated running boards on here as well, which is pretty awesome. As you can see, a pretty cool rig. Now with that diesel engine, the best part about the diesel engine, I just filled it up, 984 kilometers without it even being broken in. That is why you get a diesel. You can fill up once every thousand kilometers. That's amazing, I love that. That to me is a really big win, especially when diesel fuel is less. And if you're doing that every thousand kilometers instead of every 500 kilometers or 400 kilometers like you are in the gas ones, there is your, your cost savings right there because they're the same price. That, that's the epic mic drop right there. It's, it's the same price for the gas over the diesel. So I think you guys can see which one I'm thinking is a better option right now. Really cool build, excited to see the customer's face when they get it. All right guys, I've got another Cars and Crosby Finch Cadillac Escalade V 
that we just finished up. This is our third one. We're getting good at this already. And uh, we got that upgraded exhaust on here. It's a little cold outside, so we just uh, used the heated uh, sprayer in the other bay over there to bring it in. And then we're just gonna show you what the exhaust is made of on the new Escalade. A lot more throaty. A little echo in here, I like that. That is awesome. I love it. <laughs> you want your Escalade to sound like a little more grunt? That's it right there, guys. Now this here, something that you don't normally see. <laughs> There's that air ride suspension. How cool is that, guys? Now let's go through what this is. This is a Platinum Sport. And we've got, again, just the base tires that are on it. And uh, that was cool, eh? How it kneeled down two inches. Then you got your running boards there that are all illuminated too as well. Now on here are the base tires. I already had that little rant on the last one that we did. And on the front end, we've got the nice brakes that are on here. I'm pretty sure the customer is going to go with a nice set of 24s. We haven't finalized a deal on that yet. Not everyone comes out of the gates with it. But once you see them on with those big red calipers, it's going to look cool. I just got the heaters turned on in here so we can dry this puppy off before her delivery. I love this illuminated Cadillac Crest right there. That's one of my favorite ones. Inside here, we again have the jet black interior. We've got the Super Cruise, which is now standard and awesome. And uh, oh, I got my tripod back, guys. Thank you very much, Elvira, for bringing that back. I, I forgot it on uh, delivery, and she was very nice enough to bring it to me, which I appreciate greatly. And I ordered some cookies for that. Um, so blacked out, got the uh, brakes on it, got the exhaust done on it. This is my third delivery for the day. I've got another couple going out. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I am uh, going to make it um, a, a habit to continue to try to do these as much as possible and compile them all together. So I apologize if you're coming here for just one specific thing, like a Corvette or something. But I hope you guys can appreciate there's a lot of cool things that can be tied into other components of uh, maybe something that you don't have, or maybe you're thinking about getting one of these. And this being a flagship vehicle has a lot of stuff that they pass down to other vehicles in our uh, GM lineup. So I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Cadillac in London, Ontario, Canada. Stay tuned for more awesome con content and happy moding.